Hi guys, welcome back. This video is going to be an overview of the geologic history of the Champlain Valley. And in this video we're going to build on what we've already learned about continent-continent collision, thrust faults, and folding, and think about how those things actually conspired to form the bedrock of the Champlain Valley where we live today here in Middlebury. So this is kind of a motivation. This geologic map here shows all the complexity of the rocks that are underfoot that we drive over every day and we may not appreciate. So we're going to take a quick trip here and try to understand where all these different rocks come from. So the outline of the talk, uh, we'll first talk about sedimentary rocks that were deposited on the North American margin about 500 million years ago. Then we'll talk about the Champlain thrust and the taconic orogeny. We'll talk about the taconic mountain belt, and then we'll talk about some post-taconic collisions that also affected New England. So our story will start about 540 million years ago when North America was much smaller. Uh, it was called Laurentia then, and the continent was located near the equator, and nothing tectonically had happened at least on the East Coast, for about 500 million years. So it looks something like Australia. No mountains, uh, but probably a tropical reef that existed off the coast of the Laurentia. Not a lot of sediment flux, but a lot of organisms living in the water and building out coral reefs. Now, over time, the dead organisms and corals formed a sequence of limestones and related rocks that were deposited on the margin of North America. So these are mostly carbonate rocks. And we can think of uh, the stratigraphy in the Champlain Valley in terms of rocks that were deposited on the inner shelf or closer to shore, and then rocks that were deposited on the outer shelf or uh, further offshore. And we can see that stratigraphy over here in this combined stratigraphic column. Uh, rocks from the inner shelf include a lot of dola stones, and then a lot of limestones, and then so eventually some shales. Rocks that were on the outer shelf, pretty much the same thing, except these are more heavily metamorphosed. So we've got some dolomites, um, some marbles, and things like that. But all this stuff was deposited on the passive margin of Laurentia, or North America, about 500 and 40 to 460 million years ago. So over that time span, um, what was happening is the ocean basin was closing. And North America graded into a oceanic crust that was subducting beneath an encroaching microcontinent. So as this subduction happened, this microcontinent drew closer and closer to North America. Eventually, around 460 million years ago, this microcontinent actually collided with North America, and we had a continent-continent collision. And this is actually called the taconic orogeny. And like we've seen in previous videos, this continent-continent collision caused a lot of thrusting. So we had a lot of thrust sheets in place, and then also a lot of folding of the rocks. And obviously, the passive margin was destroyed. Um, the ocean was more or less gone. And all those sedimentary rocks were now uplifted out of the water. So that brings us to a closer look of the Champlain thrust and the taconic orogeny. So here's what this looks like today in a modern cross section. And this is roughly through the area of Middlebury, Vermont. Um, this is the Champlain thrust fault. And this is a really important thrust that was developed during that taconic orogeny. So it comes through here like this, um, and it's ramping these outer shelf rocks upwards and carrying them to the west over the inner shelf rocks. Now importantly, these pink and yellow rock units basically correlate to these same pink and yellow rock units down here. So what we see is that these rocks on top of the Champlain thrust belong much deeper. They started out way down here and they've been ramped upwards along the fault. So that means we've got older rocks over younger rocks, and also we have these rocks have a higher metamorphic grade than the rocks below them. 
So here's that same concept in map view. Uh, Middlebury is here, okay? Snake Mountain is roughly, roughly here. And the Champlain thrust intersects the surface right along this black line. And what we see is that the older, deeper rock of the Moncton Quartzite is thrust up and over the much younger rock of the Iberville Shale. So that's a pretty classic thrust relationship. Here's a visual example of that, where the Champlain thrust is exposed at Lone Rock Point in Burlington. It places the much older uh, Dunham Dolomite above the Iberville Shale. There's the actual fault plane right there. And of course, the Dunham Dolomite was an outer shelf rock, and the Iberville Shale was a quote unquote inner shelf rock. So other things to note about the local geology, we can see that most of these colorful rocks exposed in the Middlebury area are all uh, meta-sedimentary rocks that were originally deposited in the outer shelf location. And many of these were originally limestones deposited in that reef environment, but have been metamorphosed either into marbles or into dolomites. And these really make up the important carbonate rocks that floor the Champlain Valley. Now in the Champlain Valley, or I should say on the eastern flank of the Champlain Valley, we also have a lot of metamorphic basement. Okay, so these are deeply metamorphosed rocks, mostly gneisses, that were formed and metamorphosed during the Grenville orogeny about 1100 million years ago. And so these are basically the guts of these ancient mountain ranges that now make up kind of the base, or we call the metamorphic basement, upon which all these younger sedimentary rocks were deposited. So right here, as you drive east of Middlebury up towards the Snow Bowl, you'll pass into these much older metamorphic basement rocks. Um, so for example, here's what some of those gneisses look like. And of course, they have a mineral assemblage that's very consistent with a high metamorphic grade. So we may see minerals like feldspar, quartz, garnet, in some cases, even starlight or solimanite. So let's move a little bit south now and quickly talk about the Taconic Mountain Belt. So we're up here in Middlebury, about 20 minutes south of us, you start to hit the first taconic thrust sheet. And that's marked by this black line here. And these brown rocks are the taconic slate belt. And this is a rock. These are rocks that were originally deposited as deep water shales in the offshore around 460 million years ago. So at the same time, our carbonate reef was going on on the shelf, or towards the end of that period, we had a lot of deep water shales being deposited in the deeper water offshore. Now, once the taconic collision occurred, these deep water shales were thrust out of their deep water position up and over the shelf rocks. And that's what we really see here in this modern cross section. We see the taconic slates up here. They're riding along this thrust belt, and they're sitting over many of the metasedimentary rocks of the, the shelf that we had just talked about in the previous slides. So that's called the Taconic Belt or Taconic Mountains. Um, here's an example of a slate quarry. This one's in Pennsylvania, but it's very, very similar to the many slate quarries that we have in the southern Champlain Valley of Vermont and New York. Now importantly, these taconic slates uh, comprise a whole mountain belt called the Taconic Range, which extends from just south of us here in the Champlain Valley all the way down to New York City, basically. So these, this whole taconic belt represents those deeper water shales that were then thrust upwards to the west during the Taconic Orogeny right around, or beginning around 460 million years ago.
So we'll quickly wind down now with a summary of what happened after the taconic orogeny. And here's what that looks like. So we'll quickly recap. Um, at around 500 million years, we still had a passive margin of Laurentia, where we were depositing carbonate rocks on, on the near shore and then shales in the deeper water. Around 460 million years ago, the first island arc hit, that's this island arc, collides, and we have the taconic orogeny creating the Champlain thrust. And that's as far as we've discussed in this video. But that wasn't the end. There was still an ocean basin, and we actually brought in yet another block of continental crust. And when that block hit around 350 million, we had the Acadian orogeny. And then finally, the ocean basin closed entirely and the entire African continent came. We had yet another continent-continent collision called the Alleghenian orogeny, um, which ultimately left the African continent and the North American continent sutured together. And of course, since then, we know the Atlantic Ocean has opened up yet again. So here's what that would have looked like around 300 million years ago. We would have had the entire continent of Africa sutured right up against the entire continent of North America. And the northeastern U.S., Vermont, and of course, much of the eastern U.S. were right at that suture zone. Um, and that's, of course, the Proto-Appalachian Mountains that were formed during that final Alleghenian orogeny. Here's a summary of where we've been, and here's a concept question. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed learning about the geologic history of the Champlain Valley and a little bit about the eastern U.S.